Live from Redmond, Washington at Minecraft's offices here at Microsoft's headquarters with Neil Manigold, he's a director over at Minecraft. Neil, thank you for joining us on Cheddar today. Thank you very much for having me. <sighs> Oregon Trail. <laughs> last, last from the past, I played uh, a little bit last night just to remind myself a, f a wave of nostalgia just kind of flooded over me. Yeah. Why are you guys bringing it back? Yeah, I think um, for our team, you know, we have two generations of, of people that we work with. Uh, so we have teachers, uh, mm -hmm. oftentimes without dating myself. You know, a lot of us grew up playing Oregon Trail as kids ourselves. And then the opportunity to put Oregon Trail in a Minecraft world and walk through it end to end was just too cool to pass up. Um, so we've been able to do a partnership with Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, um, built the game end to end, and then a series of lesson plans as students are walking through it. So it's really been a nice experience to take something from the 80s and, and, and bring it back to life here yeah. within Minecraft. I thought that kids and new generations, they all want their own thing, right? Yeah. So why is this a good idea? Yeah, I think for us, Oregon Trail is an opportunity in the education space to connect something that's kind of iconic and pop culture for the teacher's generation. Oftentimes, educators aren't the experts on Minecraft, but the students are. And it connects something like Oregon Trail that, for me as a teacher, I taught for 10 years teaching fourth and fifth grades, and it was westward expansion and US history. Right. And so to be able to go through that and use the game the way it was really intended as an open sandbox uh, is really powerful to see what the students can pull off. Yeah, and as part of this bigger trend that we're seeing, the businesses and nostalgia coming back, especially through video games, yeah. Nintendo releasing, classic NES, classic yeah. SNES, so it's trying to bridge those two generations. Now, can you show us how it works in Minecraft? Sure, sure. So this is where you start off in the Minecraft world. You jump right into Oregon Trail, uh, and you're here in Independence, Missouri. So what I'm going to do is walk along here. Looks just about the same. <laughs> Looks just about the same. Uh, just as much text as you see here at the start. And I'm going to right click on this character, which is called an NPC. So this is something unique to Education Edition. It's a non-player character that I can load up um, as a teacher with websites and commands to run. So in this case, you get to choose. Do you want to be a banker, a carpenter, or a farmer? A carpenter, actually. A carpenter, all right. That, that's something I would. So let's select carpenter. Like so you get a bow, and you have some gold here for your journey, and you're now in Independence, Missouri. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is walk along here and find these people that say trail learning. And these are people who are playing the game in the classroom also. Are these these are actually more NPCs. We decide to always, we kind of have fun as a team most of the time and try to figure out um, what to do. So, for example, my teammate Minu is right here. So if I right click on her, everybody that worked on the game gets to have oh. their own statements. So uh, Minu is actually a high school English teacher by trade, so she likes grammar jokes. <laughs> which I don't understand half the time as an elementary school teacher, but she thinks they're absolutely hilarious. And this was not in the original game, being able to no. ask other characters about grammar and math. No, this is just what you get as being a part of a game studio. Um, but here's one of the 15 lessons. So this is a lesson called Take It or Leave It. Um, this is basically asking students to debate and discuss you're going to go five months on this journey from Missouri to the Oregon coast. Mm -hmm. What on earth do you need to take with you in order to survive? So very similar to what I would do in the classroom. And these learn more buttons launch actual web pages with full-blown lesson plans there for teachers. So for us, the teachers can pick it up, jump into the world, and students can have you know weeks of activities and social studies. But it's based on that time period. So you can't based like on... choose an iPad or a charger. There's no iPad <laughs> and you know a wheeled duffel bag right. and you no know, none of that. This is actually trying to make sure what it would actually need to survive. What are some other differences between the game from back in like nineteen ninety two, that version versus the one here in Minecraft? Yeah, I think the extensibility of it. So the fact that I adore Oregon Trail as a game, um, but it but it is a game where you have limited choices, right? They're all written in, they're hard coded, and one of the most powerful things about Minecraft is you can do whatever you want. So mm -hmm. let's say I had my students doing all the lessons, and then I wanted them to go back in. They could decide to walk down this path and build their own community and build their own homes in the style that would have been done in the 1800s and things like that. So there's really no limit. We always say with Minecraft, there's no limit except for time and imagination. And students have tons of imagination, and it's up to educators to find time, you know, days, nights, and weekends. We often hear from teachers the hardest thing is actually getting them off of Minecraft and, and back into the other parts of their school day. Okay, but what about the traps? The, yeah. uh, the, the rattlesnakes, uh, the, um, all the Ill illnesses the that dysentery. you can get. Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think of the right word to say for TV. Yeah, but. lots of people figuring out what dysentery is. <laughs> so we tried to put as many game mechanics from Oregon Trail into this world as possible. So you definitely do repair the wheel as you go. You definitely get afflicted by dysentery. Um, you get the snake bite. We have the you ability... Drown. 
Uh, can you still drown? You, in you the... can definitely drown. You can, you know, there's drown. rock slides and cliffs and things like that. Um, but we also try to keep students a little bit grounded so that they don't just go, you know, completely wandering off. You know, one of the biggest challenges for us is educators oftentimes, we didn't grow up with Minecraft. Whereas the students are walking in, we got the t-shirts and the backpacks and the whole deal. So finding a way to bridge that gap is really powerful. Other ways to bridge the gap inside the game in Minecraft, there's always yeah. little tricks and little things you can build, the mods. Yeah. Can you also do that here in Oregon Trail? How does that work? Yeah, you can do it in Oregon Trail in any of our worlds. One of the things we're most happy about is we built a, a feature set on the Minecraft Education Edition called Code Builder, which actually connects the game to popular Learn to Code platforms. So, so it might is be familiar. Something you can yeah, you can actually do, if I touch the slash key and I use the code command, it'll actually launch an entirely different window. Oh. And students can pick between Tinker, Scratch, Microsoft's own make code, and also Code.org's Code Studio. So students can actually code a little in-game character called the agent. It's like a sidekick. Okay. And they can carry out the commands for you in-game. So let's say you wanted to build a house, yeah. but you don't want to deal with building all the walls. You just want to do the nice stuff inside. Like right. My daughter would tell you she wants to decorate, like uh, do all the shiplap stuff like an HGTV show. She's really into. She can work on that, and she can program the agent to actually build the walls and do the stuff that's repetitive. And why do you think teachers like this? I, I think as a teacher, I'm you know I taught for ten years, and I was always looking for ways to connect all these subjects into my core classroom experience, but not find extra time in my day because I didn't have any. Mm -hmm. And so for something like this. I'm finding ways to bring in coding, I'm finding ways to bring in certain subject areas, but still teaching westward expansion, still teaching Oregon Trail, and I don't need to have my students in the classroom till 6 or 7 p.m. I can find ways to integrate it into what I'm doing. What's your mandate now? Because you work with teachers, you work yeah. with the schools. Yeah, I think we have lots of excitement around Minecraft. I think people see these kinds of examples and they're really interested into what can come next. I think what's up to us is what my team specifically works on is building lots of curriculum, partnering with like-minded institutions. We've done Oregon Trail, we partnered with Smithsonian, we partnered with the Raw Dahl Estate, um, all of which have been really exciting. And then lots of training resources for educators. I think as a teacher, I didn't grow up with this thing, but I'm, I'm really interested in using it in my classroom. Um, but I'm also intimidated by the fact that my students are all decked out in Minecraft swag already. Um, so that's what my team gets to work on every day is helping teachers feel more comfortable. Minecraft swag and a little covered wagon. Yeah, Minecraft <laughs> swag and a covered wagon, just stickers all over the place. There you go. So. All right, Neil, thank you so much for joining yeah, us today. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, guys, back to you at the Flatiron.